You are uh, an expert on biocrust restoration. What is biocrust? All right. All right, everyone. Welcome to Science in Shorts. I am here with Dr. Corey Nelson, who is a postdoc uh, research uh, scholar, <laughs> and he is an expert on biocross restoration. So you're gonna share with us a little bit uh, about that today, Corey. But before, we would love you to take one of those jarring questions and see what you think. Do you like the the Eppendorf? Yeah, yeah, yes, it's very affirmation. All right. So the jarring question is, what makes us human? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is jarring. So many levels to that question. I think probably what defines us is, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> I would say our ability to adapt and solve problems mm. and to think ahead. Oh, wow. As, as well as that we can, knowing where, how the world is now and we can predict where it'll be. I really thought you were gonna go for like a genome. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean like that's of course, like that's an easy one. We're all different in our genes, but I think it's more than that. I mean, we share a lot of our genes with other animals but we're something more than that right I, I, or at I, least that's what we'd like to do yes well i love that also i forgot to uh, to encourage us to wear our science and short shirts all right and i hope you like the play word that our channel has science and shorts because this is scientific content <laughs> shortly explained. All right, Corey, so now let's get to it. You are uh, an expert on biocrust restoration. What is biocrust? All right, biocrust is probably something that people haven't heard a lot about before. <laughs> so in dry land, so in areas that don't have a lot of water, there are not a lot of plants. So when you think of a desert, you think of cacti and mm -hmm. pretty much nothing else. Yeah. Actually, there's a lot of photosynthesis and uh, life going on, but most of it takes place in the very small half a centimeter, half an inch layer of soil on the surface. Mm -hmm. So in that area of soil, there are communities of microbes mm. that photosynthesize like plants and work together with other microbes to uh, bring nutrients into the soils okay. uh, in dry lands. Uh, and that's kind of uh, what I study. Wow. Uh, those are very important in those ecosystems and restoring them uh, when they're degraded by humans. Yes, uh, I was gonna important. ask, I think I've read that because of hiking and farming or cattle and so forth, like biocross is being destroyed, right? Yes, so one of the most special things about biocross and what puts them apart from plants and makes them so well adapted to dry lands is that they can completely dry out. So okay. they can go years without seeing water, wow. and as soon as they are wet, they are active again, photosynthesizing. However, you know, when they're not active, they're essentially at the mercy of whatever's happening to them. They can get crushed, uh, and that's generally what they don't like, yeah. and there's no way to protect themselves from that. Yeah. So when you have hiking <laughs> agriculture, you're destroying them, and they might not be able to recover until it rains again. And what would be the problem? Like, let's say we destroyed all of the white crust in the world. <laughs> Why do we care? So we care here at least, uh, and probably not something that a lot of people experience mm. is that when you crush these communities, uh, there's nothing holding the soil down anymore. So when the wind blows across the landscape and there's no bio crust, it's pulling up dust off the ground that's getting into the air. Right. And you can think of some really big historical things like the Great Dust Bowl, where there was just dust storms and all the topsoil was taken away oh, because wow. there was nothing holding the soil down. So it's like a lid. Yes, it's right? like a it's like a blanket <laughs> on top of the soil that's <laughs> holding it down. Yeah. So in Phoenix, at least, in dryland metropolitan areas, dust storms are a really big problem. You breathe in this dust gets into your lungs and causes a lot of health problems. Yes, and I mean, we are now experiencing a pandemic. We know what airborne diseases can do. So we wanna make sure that we keep that lid of biocrust on. Yes. What are we doing currently to develop biocrust restoration? So, like I said before, uh, biocrusts are only active when it rains, which seldom happens in the desert. Mm -hmm. So it would take 
many years to decades to even centuries to regrow areas that have been damaged. Mm -hmm. So biocrust restoration is trying to speed that up by growing these microbes in, in the lab or in nurseries to put the biomass back so there's not as much that needs to grow for it to return to how it was. Wow, that is fantastic. Well, Corey, thank you very much for this opportunity of having some science in short. We will have the papers of Corey's publications in the description below. So if you're interested in knowing more about these fascinating biocross and the restoration process, you can click on those links and learn more about it. And you can always contact us, contact Corey, contact me if you're interested in pursuing a career in science or if you are interested in knowing more about this. So thank you very much for joining us in Science and Shorts. Corey, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.